In today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how I set up, bait, check, trap, and remove nuisance wildlife animals like raccoons, possums, skunks, squirrels, and groundhogs. First things first, you have to, have to, have to identify which pest is infesting your home? I'm not going to get into the specific details of that. That's a video that requires much more detail determining exactly which animal is infesting your home. But today's video, we're just going to assume that you know. You know you have a raccoon, you know you have a skunk, or you know you have a groundhog. Now I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to do to trap them. Once you have identified the animal, you need to buy your live catch cages and you need to bait them and set them up in the proper location. That's what we're going to do now. We've got two categories of nuisance wildlife. We've got the smaller guys, we've got the squirrels and skunks. Those are going to require a smaller sized cage, about yay big. I have seen squirrels get out of the bigger cages. I have one on the ground I'm about to show you on the second. You need the holes in the cage to be less than an inch in diameter but if you have something bigger like a possum raccoon or groundhog you're going to need to get a cage that's just a little bigger especially those big raccoons those big groundhogs and possums they don't want to squeeze themselves into two tiny holes for no reason. You want to give them plenty of room to sniff around and get in. Whenever you go to purchase your live catch cages, whether it be these smaller guys or the bigger one on the ground, I recommend JT Eaton brand. They are incredibly efficient, simple, and easy to use. So what I'm going to be doing here today is actually setting up traps for skunks. The customer called with skunks getting into their backyard. They're not getting into their house necessarily, but they're going back and forth in their backyard. I'm going to show you the signs where we see the skunk activity and exactly how I'm setting them up today. So once you have your traps ready, you need to figure out, well, what bait am I going to put in there? I've got three different baits for you guys to use today. These are the ones I recommend in my opinion. They're different for each nuisance wildlife animal you're trying to trap. For skunks, raccoons and possums, my go-to is a can of cat food. It doesn't have to be anything special. Any cat food brand will do. The, honestly, the smellier, the better. All of those animals are omnivores, but they love meat. If you're dealing with groundhogs or squirrels, that's going to be a little different. Squirrels, your go-to is gonna be peanut butter. Simple, simple peanut butter. You can't deny the smell, irresistible smell of peanut butter. It lingers in the air. It stays for multiple days before it starts to dry out. Same with that cat food. The smell lingers for multiple days. That's what's going to get their attention. All these animals have huge, huge sniffers. If it's a groundhog, groundhogs are actually, in my opinion, the hardest nuisance wildlife animal to trap because they have a pretty specific picky diet depending on the time of the year. So here's what I always do. I do two things at the same time. I <laughs> combine apple slices with peanut butter. Sometimes towards the end of the year, the groundhogs are looking for more fatty foods, nuts, stuff like peanut butter. That's going to get them in the fall right before they go into hibernation. But in the springtime or summer, they're going to love the sweet things. Now you've got to figure out exactly where to set the trap. And this is similar to what we talked about earlier. This is going to be different for every pest. You're going to have to use your best judgment, do some investigation, figure out where the pest is coming in and out of. But in today's circumstance, I have identified exactly where this skunk is coming in and out of this person's backyard. So I'm going to show you exactly how I am setting up this skunk trap. You guys see this area down here? See how there's just like a hollowed out spot all that dirt, the mulch has been brushed away. That's where the skunks are getting into this person's backyard. There's just a perfect tunnel, perfect skunk sized tunnel right underneath this person's fence. You're going to grab your JT Eaton small animal trap. We are going to set it right here. It's not rocket science guys. Put it where the nuisance wildlife is going to find it. Trust me, you're not going to put it too close to them. If you somehow find where the raccoons or squirrels are nesting. You don't wanna put it like right on top of their nest. They're just gonna freak out and leave. You wanna put it in their normal foraging area. 
if they find food in their normal for food foraging area, <laughs> they're gonna eat it. So the trap's gonna go here. But we need two more things. We need the bait and we need my second secret weapon to setting up skunk traps. This magical cloak right here is my secret weapon when handling skunk infestations and skunk trapping. This is JT Eaton's cage coat. As you can probably tell, it's a camouflage coat that goes over the skunk trap. It fits perfectly around these bad boys. If you're, if you're trapping for skunks, you don't want to get sprayed. I'm going to show you why in just a second why this thing is an absolute lie. It comes in packs like this. You can reuse them. First we're going to bait, then we're going to put the cage coat around. So crack open your cat food. Just like so. This one is a salmon dinner. Crack it open, <laughs> it's gonna splatter a little bit. Here's what I do. I take the lid that I just cracked open. I scoop some out on here. I put just a little bit, just a little bit, right at the entrance. That way it's going to get their attention. Just like that, they're gonna realize there's food nearby. Then, you take this away. You don't wanna leave this in there with the animal. It's gonna cut them up. Take that away, throw it away, but you leave the whole little cup can and you put it at the very back. This may seem obvious, but it's not. You have to put it past the trigger point. I'll show you guys how this works. The live catch cages, uh, most of them work like this and it's the best, most simple way to catch. So this door has a spring. There's springs on here that push the door down and there's a little trigger point right there that latches underneath it, just a hook to keep it up. And when the skunk crawls in, as soon as it hits this lever, it pushes down on it with its weight, closes it in. Just takes just a little bit of weight. That's why I love these traps. Open the bad boy up again. Then you take your cat food very carefully. This takes a little bit of practice, but you gotta put it down in there without it spilling. Keep it level while still holding the door open. Then set the hook right underneath the door. <laughs> again, you don't wanna do anything stupid. You don't wanna cover up the normal foraging range. That's going to make them suspicious. You want to put it right next to the entrance, just like that. But before we do, you put the cage coat on, okay? This thing doesn't completely cover the cage. The animal's still going to be able to breathe. But what this bad boy does is it makes the skunks not be able to see you when you go to pick them up. This makes them feel safe, even though they're being carried around when you go to remove them. I have never been sprayed by a skunk. The hole goes through the handle there, so it's still easy to pick up. You wrap it around the bottom, set it down again, and then take these straps, take the Velcro straps right around, obviously just like that. So like I said, it's going to be open all the way through, but the skunk isn't going to be able to see because you're gonna be holding it walking like this as you walk. Another great thing about these cage coats is that a lot of people get pretty sensitive when you see an animal trapped in a cage like this, even if it was just trapped there one hour ago, five minutes ago, people get upset. They're going to knock on the door. They're going to call the homeowner. They'll even call animal control sometimes and report uh, abuse to wildlife. We don't want that. That's another pro of having the cage coats around the wildlife traps. I don't do this for just skunks. I do this for every single wildlife trap I'm setting for my pest control business. It makes the traps look much more professional and it decreases my liability as a pest control professional that someone is going to call upset about live catching nuisance wildlife, even though we're not killing them. Finally, the last two points of today's video is how to check the traps, guys. You need to check these traps once a day. Please don't let these traps sit for multiple, multiple days. You don't want them to die inside these cages. That's a big pet peeve of mine. You need to check your traps at least once a day. And finally, the last part of today's video, what do you do when you catch these animals, guys? Drive them, drive them as far away as you possibly can. 10 miles is my rule of thumb. If you drop them off a mile or less down the road, guys, some of these raccoons, some of these possums have huge foraging areas. They're going to make their way back to your house in just a couple weeks because they know the land better than you think. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Hopefully you learned something. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments and I will see you again very, very soon. Peace.